Hello, everybody. Uh, Coral here again from uh, Cybertech Postgres Consulting and continuing with our little mini series on our open source uh, Postgres monitoring tool called PGWatch2. So in the previous episodes, we already covered um, the general idea and the architecture and the benefits of using this tool. And then we looked at setting up like a monitoring with, with uh, the Docker images that we provide. And, and that's the way the, the most people are going to probably uh, go. But if you have some special needs or you don't like Docker or you want more configuration or, or uh, future upgrade flexibility, actually setting up like um, uh, PGWatch 2 with, with some uh, custom components is, is a good idea. And I mostly also actually do it like that. Uh, so let's just dig in. Uh, se uh, the setup part is, of course, also. So this is the topic list for today. We're, um, we're going to go through all of this. So, um, uh, and all of this is, of course, also documented. So we on our uh, uh, documentation side. So if you go here on GitHub on the GitHub page, so there there's the link to the documentation. And and basically, yes. Yeah, so we're we're talking about this stuff here. Uh, uh, custom installation, yeah. Uh, but we're, we're not going to actually look too much into documentation today uh, and, and not too much into the slides. Also, we're going to be more hands on and the slides can get boring, yeah. Uh, and again, a couple of words about the deployment models. So basically, we've got like uh, two main models. The, the pool model, so we, we connect remotely to the databases. And that's how most people actually use PGWatch. And then we've got the push model also. So it means that we run the, the metrics uh, collector or agent or diamond, it's called also, um, directly on the database host. And, and then we push the metrics in, into some, some database, metrics storage database. And uh, we're going to go here, basically, with both setups, so as I'm going to do it on my workstation. So, and uh, now I'm going to just you know go hands on. You can you can uh, review the slides later. And basically, basically, yeah, we, we need to start from um, uh, like a monitoring user. So in any case, with any tool, you know, if you want to monitor Postgres, you need some kind of a monitoring user and and. Um, um, in most cases, we, we would be nice to stick with actually with this uh, user for PGWatch 2 because all the default scripts provided by the project kind of assume that. Uh, so yeah, um, and you would uh, also like to probably give it some more uh, access to the metric. So so if you just use a normal, unpri totally unprivileged login user, you will actually also get already most of the metrics but you will also miss a lot. And, and yeah, so starting from version 10, you want to grant the special system grant called PG Monitor to the monitoring user. And, and for important databases also maybe limit the amount of parallel collections in case you run by accident, maybe many instances of PG Watch 2 or, or maybe if it goes crazy, it's also theoretically possible. Um, and, and almost always you also want to make sure that this extension is installed uh, on all the monitored databases. So, so this is the most famous ex extension uh, for Postgres uh, PG Star statements. It will actually uh, show you uh, who's your, uh, what, what are your problem queries, who's burning the most resources basically. And once you've done that and verified that the user can connect and can you know, do some basic queries, um, uh, you usually also want to now um, create some helpers. So this uh, from from Postgres versions uh, 10 and upwards, actually this uh, this uh, PG Watch 2 uh, or PG Monitor system role covers almost everything that you need to access inside Postgres. But in case you actually also want to uh, tie in some some operating system metrics like you know CPU load, memory usage, uh, disk access uh, stats. So so for this type of stuff, you 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 want to install some helpers. 
Uh, so, and, and uh, what, is, what is a helper? Basically, it's just, um, if you go into the code here, so we've got uh, metrics and helpers. So there, it's just a bit of wrapper code and to look at uh, some, some uh, system statistics. And here using, for example, uh, P, uh, the PSU the Python library, and uh, yeah, so so some of some some of those helpers are actually also, in case you really uh, you're on an older version, or you you don't want to hand out this PG um, uh, monitor role, you can also extend uh, the visibility for normal users. So you can expose, for example, the, the some running uh, query statistics and such. We have this security definer control privilege escalation. So, and for rolling out uh, such uh, helpers, so there are a couple of options. So you can uh, use use uh, like this this Python script that that just you know rolls out everything on your target uh, databases or target instances. Uh, or actually, you can when, later when you start uh, PG Watch Two, uh, its user interface also has uh, like a small flag. That that you know allow um, so so auto uh, yeah it's called auto create helpers and uh, it, it, if you if you're actually connecting as super user it will roll out all of those helpers for you and later you should of course then maybe strip the super user rights or, or switch to a, a completely new user here uh, and and you can also roll out the helpers manually also so. Just you know, pick and choose what you like, uh, what kind of uh, default metric sets you, you know you want to uh, make happy, so that you wouldn't get too many errors in your Postgres and PGWatch two logs, and and um, yeah, so this is what you mostly also want for nice, really nice dashboards. And there are a couple of other workarounds to extend the amount of metrics. Uh, so you, so in the recent versions of PG Watch Two, so there's a flag also, uh, meaning if you if you're running the agent on the database server, so so we can extract the statistics actually directly uh, from the operating system. So so you don't need those wrappers then. And uh, also, if you're using the if you're granted the PG agent role or so PG monitor role, so you're good then. And there are some other workarounds also. So how to tie in, for example, um, non-Postgres metrics, some some weird uh, uh, backup checks, maybe something like that. So so for that, I think we've got some couple of samples here also. Non-SQL yeah. metric gathering examples, for example, how to how to perform some some disk health checks. So and and then then just you know push this data into the metric store directly. So you, you, it's just a database in the end, yeah? the, the metric storage database, so you can do whatever you want. Um, and sometimes it actually makes sense also to not to write back those, those uh, uh, non-Postgres metrics um, in, into our storage database, but leave them where they are. For example, uh, like, like in, uh, some cloud, cloud providers like Amazon already store some metrics. So, and you can then directly just access them uh, in, your, in your Grafana dashboard. So for that, for example, I think there's an example dashboard here also. So uh, uh, CloudWatch, yeah, for example, how to, hide, how to tie in those logs and uh, probably also a screenshot, uh, screenshots. Yeah, so this is this is for example how it how it would look like. Um, but good. So now we have uh, we prepared our databases for monitoring. Now we really need to install PG Watch Two. So basically, uh, most users uh, probably don't want to mess around and build their own. Ah, uh, so they want to don't want to build their own packages. So you would just go to the um, PGWS2 releases tab and download this uh, uh, pre-built package. Uh, so let's do it. Take some seconds. 
and then we can just install it. Then. sudo pgwatch2. But of course, you can also, you know, um, build these packages by yourself. So we we everything is uh, uploaded on uh, on GitHub. So you you would need this um, uh, goal releaser tool together with the NFPM tool. Uh, or uh, if you are interested only on this uh, on on um, on the agent, uh, you can also just. Uh, you know, go into the source and say go build, or actually there's a build script also provided that has some benefits. It will it will also like add some some uh, dates and Git version numbers uh, to the to the help output, or actually minus minus version output. But now we have a pgwatch two diamond uh, available, and yeah, so this is this is the main thing that we need. So. Uh, yeah, this diamond that will then, you know, will connect to the, some kind of configuration store and then fetch a metrics and store them in the metrics database. That's about it. Um, good. Uh, so, uh -huh. and another alternative, actually, you can uh, also use the, the, the Docker, the diamond only Docker image as a normal. Uh, uh, executable. Well, basically, it is like if you execute this this uh, uh, time on it, it is it behaves exactly like a normal uh, command. So then we need to bootstrap the metrics database. So there are two options, of course. So uh, so you can have a. Uh, Okay, sorry. So uh, you always need a metrics data, database, basically, uh, with the configuration. You've got two options. So, so to use Postgres database or like a file file based uh, config. Um, and here, actually, this is the biggest decision for big setups. So you you can go with InfluxDB. You can go with Postgres. Uh, we also actually support Graphite. As more or less as legacy option, and then then you can also actually make Postgres storage a bit more uh, a lot more efficient uh, with with this time scale DB hugely popular extension. Uh, but in our case, we're gonna go with with uh, normal uh, Postgres. I have it already installed and running in the background, and it's actually the recommended. Um, Storage still for PGWatch for, for small to medium size, uh, size setups for sure. Um, if you got if you plan to monitor hundreds of databases, you might probably want to look at timescale DB or influx uh, rather at timescale. So we're not even sure if we're going to go supporting influx. So uh, because timescale compression is is as good and you get full uh, SQL power. So how to set up now our uh, postgres metrics db well it's a bit it's a bit complex here actually you can you can in the documentation you can also read about it so so uh, you, you, there are a couple of different uh, partitioning schemas available or if you're running some old postgres version that doesn't support partitioning you can you know basically uh, do it also uh, but yeah so the, the default um, uh, like weekly partitions for for every metric separately so it's called a metric time schema and this is the default for the uh, docker postgres packed image also so we'll be using that one so for that we need of course a database uh, uh, create db uh, pg watch to uh, metrics yeah metrics uh, and maybe owner also pg pg watch to you watch too. Good. And now we can roll out uh, the, the storage schema. So that's now after installing this uh, package, it's located under etc, pgwatch2, SQL, I think, and the metric store. Yeah. And then you just execute uh, 
our database, pg to metrics, and the file name, rollout metric time. And done. So, as a next step, we need, um, ah, here, uh, some more details on, on choosing, uh, on choosing um, a storage schema. But then we need a config DB. Uh, so this is, it's a very, very simple plain schema. Basically, you can, you can install it on some existing uh, ancient Postgres versions also. And the commands are here. Basically, we need a database. Uh, again, uh, create DB. Just let's say pgwatch2 is the default name. And then again, we need to roll out. Uh, but this time we need the config store. So, uh, PC call, PG watch two, PG watch two, and five config store. And now we need also the metric definitions. Um, so, next. So this, this database is gonna you know, uh, hold the data on which actually databases to monitor and uh, which metrics we want to monitor and how frequently we want to fetch this data. And as an alternative to this config DB, so we can also set up like a file-based, purely file-based um, configuration. And, and uh, this is also actually ben quite beneficial uh, as, as especially in the, uh, pull mode. Uh, sorry, in the in the push mode. Uh, so we do so we do not need like a central configuration database then. Only like a central storage database. Um, and one less component to back up, and uh, you know you can version it easier, and, and there are benefits. Um, but but uh, first, let's maybe actually test our uh, config DB based setup. And for that, actually, we want to maybe now start this, this uh, built-in um, uh, admin UI. So it's also located somewhere here, I think, uh, WebPy, yeah, WebPy. And just let's try, this should work, I hope. Yeah. And da, 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 so, so, so this is this is the, the, the basic, uh, very like like a rudimentary, uh, not overly uh, nice GUI for, for managing uh, our monitoring inventory. And here now to see that PG Watch uh, that our all our uh, components are basically in place, the configuration DB, the storage DB. Uh, we now can can test it. So, uh, local host. Da, da, da. 